up here at the house in my little makeshift nursery. I need to get the remaining tomatoes and cucumbers planted out into the greenhouse beds sometime this week, um, along with the flat of basil, which is ready to go out as well. And I was just taking a look at my flats of lettuce that I seeded last week and they're popping up. So I need to get these guys out to the greenhouse tables so they don't get leggy. This week, we're gonna have a few more days of rain with some sun breaks, and then we're supposed to get some sunny days. Okie dokie, I am in the cucumber and tomato greenhouse, and I pulled the row cover that I had on them off just this morning. And uh, I've got my new germinating flats of lettuce back there, along with the other successions of lettuce. And today I need to clip back <laughs> Some of the baby greens on the side that are growing really big. Oh, tomatoes and cucumbers. And I also need to clip back this bed of Salanova lettuce and get it prepped for planting out the rest of the tomatoes and cucumbers. So what I need to do with this bed of lettuce is clear out the center row to make room for the remaining cucumber and tomato transplants. And I also need to transplant some of this lettuce to the outer two rows where I normally don't like to plant because sometimes it gets a little too dry, but I just need more room for more lettuce. All transplanted and watered in. Hopefully it doesn't turn into a mildew fest. Orich, baby chard radishes hello 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 i am in here in the what will be the basil greenhouse today um the basil will get planted out amongst the carrots somehow later this week when the sun comes out and um i've got my kale here recovered from getting eaten by the golden crown sparrow i am going to clip off all the big leaves today because the plan is to prep a bed out in the new garden area and plant all of this kale out in it. Breakfast. I've got to clean up the rest of this salad mix first. I've got 10 eight ounce bags of salad mix coming from two approximately 20 foot rows of salad of lettuce plus a little bit of chard and a little bit of orange. Okay, so we're having kind of this weirdly windy weather um worst time to prep and transplant but whatever it's raining a little bit too so i've got these three beds out here in the new garden area and i had thrown in some clover and sugar snap peas just to get something in them you know fixing nitrogen but i think i'm going to go ahead and use this third bed the one farthest away from the worms over there and plant out the kale from the greenhouse just so i can put that kale to use um, I checked the rotted seaweed that I'd be using, you know, to throw on top of here, and I did not see any worms or eggs or anything apparent. The rotted seaweed raked out on the bed. So I dug out this pathway onto the bed, but I gotta run off and eat some lunch or dinner, whatever it is. <laughs> and I'm so hungry because all I had was kale for breakfast. <laughs> Dudes, I didn't just have kale for breakfast, I had oatmeal too. Okay, so I'm back out here and back at it. Starting my transplanting at 6.30 in the afternoon. I've got the dirt raked out and I used the two row gritter. 20 at a time in a tray. Okay guys, so everything is cleared out here. And I think I'm gonna take these extra chards and jam them out there too. Okay, I've got 121 kale on the two outer rows and chard, 35 in the center with a little patch in the back there. And I've got uh, three bok choy at the bed ends for the slugs. This is way tighter than I normally plant them, but I just wanted to get them all out there and give them a chance. I think I'm gonna try watering these guys in, even though that sounds kind of crazy because it's probably gonna rain, but I just want to make sure that they get, you know, soil kind of settled around their little roots. Watered in and row cover on to keep out the root maggot fly 
And plus, I still don't have my fencing up to keep out the deer. I've got the drip irrigation running on the greenhouse beds, except for the one over in the basil greenhouse where I'm gonna be planting out lettuce starts this morning. I've got the row cover pulled off this morning on the cucumbers and tomatoes, and I've got my successions of lettuce in those little soil blocks. This set was supposed to go out in the garden last week. Okay, folks, I am over here in what will later be the basil greenhouse planted amongst the carrots. And um, over here in this messy bed where I pulled the kale last night, um, I'm going to plant my Salanova lettuce into this bed. Now, normally I would plant my lettuce out in the garden with the four row gritter where the spacing is 7.5 inches. But in order to get my approximately 140 plants into this bed, I'm going to take where the drip holes are spaced about a foot apart and put a plant in between so it will be six inch spacing. That's the plan. Alrighty, so I've got the bed smoothed out and the drip going to try and keep this line straight so I know where to plant. Can I get this done in less than a half hour? 72 each red and green Salanova lettuce. Okay, so normally I would plant one bed of basil and then later in the season plant a second half bed of basil to have something fresh later in the season. But this year I'm just going to make do with one bed because I need this bed for lettuce as part of my saving the lettuce program, which um, is this is just the first phase. I don't know if this drip is going to water everything in well enough, so I may need to water later today, but right now I need to run off. Today is going to be a bunch of non-gardening tasks that I have to do, so um, there's that. In my little terrarium up here at the house, I um, still have the worms in their worm form, so they haven't changed into crane flies. Today I'm going to be transplanting out the rest of the cucumbers and tomatoes into this greenhouse and also the basil will be going into the other greenhouse. But first I wanted to do a little bit of row cover swapping out here in the garden. I planted this kale out the other day and it's got thrips row cover on it which lets in more air and I wanted to do the same to this bed of kale that I transplanted out you know a couple weeks ago. And also I wanted to check in this bed of kale where I had such problems with crane fly larvae. I put some collars around some of the stems and also pieces of garlic and I wanted to see if that helped them survive. I did the same with this half bed of lettuce over here. Okay, so most of these plants are looking fine. You can see this plant here with a piece of garlic next to the stem and it's undamaged, but this one over here you can see where the stem has been chewed, even though it's got a piece of garlic next to it. Some of them I had not garlic, I just had collars, cardboard collars that I put around and they look fine. Even though some of these, once I watered them, they kind of popped open and don't cover the stem completely. This is the only plant in this bed that was killed and you can see it does have a piece of garlic right next to the stem, but the stem has still been eaten through. So, I mean, it seems like this works, but maybe just not 100%. Okay, row cover swapped out to this lighter weight stuff. And now I'm gonna take a look at the lettuce bed and see how it fared. So I see about a dozen plants in this half bed of lettuce that got hit pretty bad by that larva. Um, you know, oh, here's another one. I've already kind of picked some of the, the leaves off, but you can see like the leaves are just dead, completely dead. So I've got the lighter row cover on these two beds of kale over here, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull this Agrabon off the two beds of kale here um, and put it back on at night just because of the spotted cutworm moth that comes out at night, but uh, there has been flies up underneath this row cover. So, you know, uh, root maggot. <laughs> oh my gosh, and there's so many crane flies. Can you see? This is the guy that does 
you know, makes that crane fly larva that eats the roots or the stems of everything. And there's like a bunch of them in here coming. Um, yeah, so, uh, I, I mean, the root maggot, if it was gonna get this, these plants, this is the chard over here, this half bit of chard, but the kale is in the back of that row. And then also this full bed here. Um, so yeah, if the root maggot was gonna get these guys, it already got them. And so I just wanna make sure the spotted cutworm moth doesn't get them at night. So yeah. And I think I'm also gonna go ahead and pull all the row cover off um, the beds over here of carrots. Um, just the two that have already germinated, you know, and leave this one on the, the bed that I most recently seeded and, and it hasn't germinated yet. I've got my starts over on tables back there because the greenhouses are pretty warm. So these guys are doing pretty good. Just a couple of holes in these beds where the plants got eaten, but not too bad. Tomatoes and cucumbers are surviving in that bed. So we're gonna plant the next batch or the last batch right here. I got them all planted. Uh, 15 in this bed and I added one at the end so I've got 15 cucumbers in this bed and I put the tomatoes at this end I don't know why um, and they're actually so tall or tall enough that they really kind of need the support so I already got their little strings attached these guys are already trying to make flowers um, dudes I think you should wait and make some roots first. I've got four little plants left and five that didn't germinate, except for this one, he's trying. Okay, I'm in the other greenhouse and <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of time, but I think I'm going to attempt to get this basil in amongst the carrots. Alrighty, so I got them all planted. Um, well, not all of them, because I got 72 in the flat and I have 12 left plus one that didn't germinate and um i watered these guys one day let me show you it burnt their leaves this is up at the house under the lights so some of these i just are not that healthy and i don't know how they're gonna do Hey folks, so today I started cleaning up the disaster mess that is in my compost bins. Um, I just used to throw things in there to get them out of the rain, like tarps on top of compost. I did a little bit of weeding because we've got this hot weather and so the little tiny weeds, you know, um, will die, die, die. I've got my um, starts out on the tables over there and I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave them out for the night. Um, put row cover over the top of them taking a quick look inside the tomato and cucumber greenhouse and look everything's cleared out in here tomatoes and cucumbers are holding up okay so far and over here in the basil greenhouse everything's cleared out in here too this basil is looking horrible like all of them are getting this translucent um, leaves and I don't know it's been really cold at night they're used to 70 degree weather and it's been down uh, 41 43 so the plan to uh, save my lettuce season is to go ahead and till up these walkways in both of the greenhouses and um, I don't think that I'm gonna get to potatoes or getting the fence up this week again. I will have to have like a um, potatoes planted little celebration dance when I'm done with that. Got about two feet of material in this bin here. Uh, rotted seaweed and shredded cardboard from two autumns ago. Compost in this walkway and compost in this walkway.
tilled, tilled, and tilled. I pulled the rotted seaweed from this pathway and threw it on top just to kind of dry it out because I think some of those crane fly larvae are living in that seaweed. And so just wanted to get it all dried out. I don't think they like it dry. And we shall see if the basil survives, if the, the lettuce in there will like living with um, in that hotter temperature. Uh, same thing with the other greenhouse, if the lettuce in that greenhouse is gonna be able to live with the cucumbers and tomatoes. <laughs> Oh, that's everything folks. We'll see you guys next week. Fence posts, people.